I suppose that's quite clear for me because I was, I mean, as I was saying before, I studied maths at university. Um, I was already taking pictures then and I was working for the student newspaper. I mean, I suppose about a year or so into my degree, I realised that I wanted to be a photographer. And I had applied for this course at LCP. So I did that for a year and then I moved to India. And I suppose when I finished the course and I moved to India, that was when I became a professional photographer and that's when I started. I won this award with The Guardian when I was working on the student newspaper. So they had, I was like a little bit of a first thing. So they gave me a couple of jobs and then slowly I did work for, like, the, you know, The Guardian, The Times, The Telegraph, kind of. The best thing for me was to get out of London. It's very difficult to make a living as a photographer living in London because there's a lot of people and not that much work and it's not that well paid. So for me, going to India was like opened up a whole load of opportunities that I would never have had with the portfolio that I had. The work that I did when I left India was a project about women and the crossover of East and West, basically. So I did this journey along the border between Europe and Asia, looking at different stories. And that was kind of, that kind of grew out of my experience in India and seeing this one culture that had a role for women that was very different from the culture that I came from. And trying to understand that, you set out with these big ideas about what you might find, and when you get there, you obviously find something that's quite different. And I mean, that's one of the things that I really enjoy with photography, is that you set out with, this is what I'm going to go and look for, and actually, in the end, you get something often very different and that's I think you have that what's very important I think some people don't let that happen enough in the the kind of work I've been doing recently is you know it's it's very much about spending time with people hanging out kind of melting a little bit into the background and taking pictures quite slowly eventually if they're comfortable with you they'll just let you be there and kind of forget you're there and you're just the guest that can actually be a really helpful way to kind of observe and take pictures very slowly what kind of camera do I use? It mostly, I mean, the work that people, I mean, if they go on my website and people will see, I, I mainly use a Hasselblad. I really like that camera because, mainly because of the waist level finder. Someone had said that it's a very, um, like a very uh, deferential, like you're, you're sort of bowing to people as you're taking their picture. And that's, a, I mean, it's not something I ever thought about, but someone saw me and said that that, which is very different to this feeling of like that. Taking a good picture is, you know, or a beautiful picture or whatever is, is, is not so difficult anymore. So it's gotta, it's, there's got to be a bit more than that. But, but at the same time, it can be, they don't have to be amazing ideas. They can be really simple. Now, there was a guy at The Guardian who was very helpful to me as well. And he was like, listen, if we get you to do a portrait, you know, edit them through and send us like eight portraits. If we get you to do a little story, send us 20 pictures. So that was very helpful. Yeah, bombarding people with pictures is definitely something that I did, and that's, I, I suppose that I would advise people not to do. You know, I could probably look over old emails now and go, oh God, did I send them?